Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate a process for creating a sheet metal punch, but this particular feature is not like a punch where you're going to penetrate the material through the thickness. It's more like a, some sort of an emboss or a dimple feature. So this was presented to me the other day from a client that I'd had in class, and they just weren't sure how to model it. So I'll walk you through the process, give you some important considerations, and uh, hopefully this gets you going on, on these types of, of shapes. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set up a template type model. So in this case, because I don't know exactly the length of that, that form shape, I made a 12 inch long by 2 inch wide plate. Just You want to make sure it's large enough to anticipate the sizes you'll want to test. And then you're going to want to save that. So my recommendation is to create a folder and I like to call this like um, punch base models. Now the reason I think it's important to save these is because if you want to come back and do a one-off or republish after the fact, it's really helpful to have the original. So I'm going to call this sheet metal um, emboss base. Okay, so we'll save that. That's the, the first part. Next thing is you want to create some parameters. I should have created these ahead of time. I forgot to. So we'll just say, um, let's say uh, main slot length. Oops. We'll say slot diameter. Oops. And then we'll give it one more. We'll say um, slot. Oops. Slot extended length okay so we'll just say we'll make this say six inches we'll say the diameter is 0.5 and we'll say that is one inch so perfect so now that we've defined that and of course make sure we save it now this is the tricky part if you're going to make shapes like this and you want to use them as eye features or sheet metal punches you really want everything based off of one sketch um, eye features really struggle when you try to control them in two directions. Either the feature doesn't get made very well, or you start to have so many different selection methods, it's really easy for people to goof it up. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a sketch right on this surface. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is another point of contention I've run into with folks, is basically um, how, how would you center this? So for a sheet metal punch, you need a center point. You could use this center point. I've had people over the years, um, people that I respect, say that they've run into issues when they use the center point. I've never had a problem with it. So you could choose to center the shape here, but I'm going to go ahead and choose the two point center rectangle. <clears throat> and I'm gonna create it off center a little bit. So this is where I'm going to press the delete key, grab these dimensions. So this will be my um, slot length. Press the tab key, hit the delete key again, and that's going to become my slot diameter, which I had from before, but just to show you, I can grab it here. So once I have that, I hit enter, and there's my shape. So that's, that's uh, method one. Now the other thing that we can do is then we could create this extended version. So I'm going to create a line, draw it like so. I'm going to create my arc from the end of a line. That's a tip where you can just left click, hold, and drag. And then we'll create that. So I'm going to go ahead and make that um, <clears throat> tangent. Here we go. I'm going to center that using the horizontal constraint. There we have it. So then we can apply a dimension from here to the end using that little quadrant snap, and that's going to be our extended length. There we go. And then, nope, that's crazy. So we'll go ahead and make that say 0.125. So there we have it. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's go ahead and draw that out. Line. line, tangent, make these equal to this 
and then this one equal to that one. And then we'll align that with the center point. There we go. Um, one more equal here. So I'm kind of building this off to, on a fly. And then we're down to two dimensions, which is great because that just means that we don't have this located to the center point, which is okay. Like I said, some people like that, some people hate it. So just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to turn this to construction, turn this to construction, and there we've got this main bit. So this is the inside of the slot. So this is where it gets another little bit tricky deal. We want to offset this entire shape by the thickness. So you'll see that in a second, but we're going to offset that by thickness. Now we've got the shape. I'm going to go ahead and draw one more line from quadrant point to quadrant point. Okay. And then that's going to become construction. We could also potentially make this touch. I guess last time I did it, I'll make it touch there and there as well. No, oh, okay, fine. So there we've got it. We'll go ahead and see if we can revolve those now. So we'll go ahead and finish the sketch. So that's the basis for the design. So the next part is we want to base everything off of this initial design. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the 3D model area. I'm going to grab the revolve command and I'm going to revolve, hopefully just the top half here. Okay, my construction line is not working the way I wanted it to. So that's okay. I'll go ahead and remake it. This happens sometimes if we make a mistake. Just delete that line and we'll make a new line. This time we'll go from this point to this point. There we go. And I'll go from this point to this point. So if you ever run into that, sometimes it, it just doesn't play the way that we want. Have to come back in here and add those. And then I'll go ahead and turn that into a center line again. So just make adjustments. It's okay. Go ahead and finish that up. That's a common mistake. You can see I even made it. And now when I look here, see now I can split that in half. So if you run into that, it's not the end of the world. So I picked the full half. I'm going to do a 180 degree revolve about the central axis. Now, if it goes the wrong way, which it did, let's go ahead and flip it the other way. So there you go. It seems a little goofy. We're doing a solid fill. So I'm just going to hit apply. I've mentioned that in other videos. Just saves a little bit of time. So awesome, we put the big part in the back. Now I'm gonna take and select just the inside profile. Again, revolving it about this axis, flip it the other way and that's gonna be the cut. So that's how you would create it. So in that scenario, by using the cut feature, I'm still using the same sketch. I'm all referencing the same plane. I'll put a center point on there because I forgot to. And then that they'll define my feature. So go ahead and hit okay. There you can see we've got that feature generated. So make sure we save this. So there was one thing I did forget. Inside the sketch is actually the need to <clears throat> put a center point in. So there's a point here already. I could pick it. You could stick another point down there. I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. I'll just put a point there because the feature needs a center point in order to locate it. So once we've done that, we can do the process of actually publishing the punch. So if I go to the manage tab, I'll go through this relatively quickly. It's still an eye feature, even though we're gonna extract it as a sheet metal punch, you'll pick your features, and then you can kind of go through here and do the sheet metal punch stuff. So there's a couple different things that you can do. Um, you can come in here and you can give it different values if you wanted to. So you could say the slot could be a range of values. I'm not gonna go through this. Um, I could say it has to be greater than, I don't know, three inches, but it can't be infinity, uh, or I guess it could be. So, you know, you could set a minimum and a maximum. You could give it specific sizes if you wanted to. So I could say um, it can be 0.375. It could be 0.75. You know, you could just kind of play with it. 
So you can play with different ways of controlling it. The important stuff though, is you're gonna to wanna to name your ID. So I'm gonna call this, um, I'll call it the slit emboss. I can select a sketch. This is important for my simplified rep. That'll be good if we wanna show it on a punch. And then you can also name the feature here. So that'll make it easier when we go to save it. You can name it. I'm not gonna get into creating an icon and stuff like that, but there's different things that you can control here. I'll then save that. It's gonna automatically put it wherever your catalog is located, so that's fine. I'll save it in the punches as the slit emboss. So once we've done that, that's it. Again, you'll want to preserve this model, the base model, so make sure it's saved. That way if you screwed it up or you wanted to make some adjustments or you wanna make another variation, you can always come back to this base model. Now before you unleash it on your unsuspecting colleagues, you always wanna create a sample. So let's test it out. I've got a, I'll say a 24 by 24 plate, whoops. And we'll go ahead and face that. Yep, just accepting all the defaults. And then in a, the only thing you need to place a sheet metal punch is just some center points. So I'll just slap a couple in here, call it good. And now we can access the punch tool. Again, it will look in our sheet metal punches library. And there you can see the slit emboss that we just placed. I hit open and it's going to place that feature all along. Now you can also play with the size if you want. So if you wanted to make those say eight inches long, etc., or you wanted to play with the, the thickness, you could, you could experiment with that. Go ahead and hit finish. And there you can see that's your sheet metal emboss like feature. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.